My name is Deji Olukatun. I work for an organization called Access Now, and um, my title is a Global Advocacy Manager. So um, I work on international campaigns um, all around the world. Uh, Access Now, our mission is to uh, defend and extend the digital rights of users at risk. So we're very focused on uh, promoting human rights on the internet. Um, we're a unique organization. We're only about five years old. And one of the exciting things that we have is a 24-hour digital security helpline, which is free for journalists and activists worldwide. Um, we work with uh, marginalized groups like LGBT people, um, people who've been persecuted for their beliefs, uh, journalists. And 24 hours a day, we can help them secure their, uh, you know, their devices, their computers, their cell phones. And uh, last year alone, we supported over a thousand people uh, using our helpline from 70 countries around the world. Um, but we also do campaigning uh, where we, uh, for issues, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, affect uh, human rights, especially related to the internet, um, we do campaigns, um, everything from privacy, fighting government surveillance, Mm -hmm. to uh, fighting for free expression and stopping blocking and censoring of people online. Yeah, so, um, yeah, my role is very much international. Um, I'm based in our New York office, and um, we have different policy buckets, we call them, which are our sort of priority focuses Mm -hmm. um, beyond the helpline. Um, those are business and human rights, mm -hmm. digital security, privacy, free expression, and then net discrimination, which is also sometimes called net neutrality, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that the internet is open and, and free to use. Um, so yeah, those are the different ones. And I, I uh, run campaigns mm -hmm. um, across all of those areas in different countries around the world, from countries like Nigeria, um, to Nauru, which is a tiny little island in the Pacific mm -hmm. off the coast of Australia, um, to Malaysia. And uh, we have a really exciting campaign right now where we're trying to push back on this really horrible trend of governments to mm -hmm. shut down the Internet. Um, so they'll just flick off, um, order telecommunications companies to turn off the Internet. Mm -hmm. And usually it's a an early warning sign for human rights violations, that uh, when these orders happen, uh, bad things follow, uh, people get beaten up, journalists get locked up, politicians get arrested, and uh, we're, we've seen this trend increasing worldwide. Um, in, we, we counted at least 15 last year mm -hmm. in 2015, and we've already seen five or six this year. Um, what's even worse is that they are now seem to be following elections, so governments will have what they think um, is a close election or they want to control votes and they'll shut off the internet um, according to them to keep order um, but as a result people um, aren't able to uh, communicate they don't know what's going on mm -hmm. with uh, uh, around the country mm -hmm. and it, there's also a huge economic loss so uh, we there was a shutdown in Gujarat which is a province in uh, India and mm -hmm. the toll for banks alone that lost money because of mobile money where it's about 20 well 23 million dollars um, per day and uh, that doesn't include all the other things that happen like mm -hmm. uh, losing access to emergency services mm -hmm. um, losing access to just the ability to sell products um, mm -hmm. because so many people use their mobile phones and then news reports are really hard to get out so that's one of the the major campaigns that uh, I'm working on right now but we have many more and I'm happy to talk about them with you It's someone who's kind of unreachable, only will respond to in-person conversations, then an outside strategy isn't necessarily the right way forward. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's someone who's worried about their public image, say, for example, they're running for office mm -hmm. or they're working on some other bill or law that they're trying to pass and they don't want to lose support for that, then sometimes a public campaign can be better.
Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so we'll we'll sort of adjust our strategy that way. So at the UN, mm-hmm. it tends to be more inside uh, right. strategy, mm-hmm. delegates talking to each other, mm-hmm. having coffee, having lunch, um, meeting together. Mm-hmm. Um, but in other places, um, public pressure can make a difference. Like in the U.S. Congress, sometimes an outside campaign can really uh, spur a politician into action. And we campaign very hard against government surveillance. We mm-hmm. think that it should be uh, surveillance should be necessary and proportionate mm-hmm. um, to the aim that it's trying to achieve. And just blanket surveillance, backing, vacuuming up communications from Americans, but also from uh, people like yourself and mm-hmm. people overseas, is indiscriminate, and in that it it really violates people's privacy. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we, you know, we also have practical questions about how. Uh, useful that information is at that Mm -hmm. volume that it's not even really possible to analyze it in in an effective way, at least not right now. Mm -hmm. Um, So we definitely work um, very hard on U.S. issues. Um, Mm -hmm. Our Brussels team is really fantastic at Mm -hmm. working on European issues at the EU level with Mm -hmm. European Parliament and the EU institutions. Um, So they, um, you know, they, they do this similar thing where they, sometimes they're talking with uh, European members of parliament and sometimes they're running campaigns to get people to pressure representatives publicly mm-hmm. and depending on the, the need at the time. Um, I, I can give an example. There's a new UN um, expert uh, mm-hmm. appointed by the UN on privacy and we mm-hmm. were very much involved in supporting that. Um, supporting for the position, there was a resolution calling for the importance of privacy after the post uh, Snowden Mm -hmm. uh, revelations about national security agency spying in the U S and worldwide. Mm -hmm. So we pushed for those things and we got them, Um, you know, on a a different level, there's uh, sometimes you ask about companies. Sometimes we go after companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, We think they've made a bad decision and I can give two quick examples. One is there's actually a great uh, Dutch tool called Mm -hmm. Um, which uh, records the deleted tweets of politicians. Um, so elected officials mm-hmm. um, and public officials, sometimes they'll, you know, they'll, they'll use Twitter as a platform to reach their audiences, to try to push their issues. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they'll make a mistake and mm-hmm. they'll delete a tweet just like everyone does. Right. But sometimes they'll change their position mm-hmm. and delete that tweet a year later or two years right. later so that there's no evidence that they once before were su- leaning in mm-hmm. a different direction. Right. Um, so Twitter turned off that tool, um, mm-hmm. which was run by the Open State Foundation, the Sunlight Foundation, and we worked really closely with these groups to campaign to get Twitter, Twitter to turn it back on. Mm-hmm. And um, after several months of campaigning and also negotiations, they did turn it back on. So mm-hmm. um, now that tool is operating again, and it's a way to hold politicians accountable. Um, so that's an example of... Um, more being focused on free expression and this in business and human rights. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, but you know, in other times we're actually on the other side. So, uh, in Nigeria, there's a bill which, um, is, would criminalize, uh, it's in, in the legislature would criminalize tweets and, mm-hmm. uh, Facebook posts. You could go to jail for two years. Um, if you, for under this particular clause, especially if it talks about a public official. Mm -hmm. So we're actually on the other side saying that's a terrible idea. It does, yeah. It's, people are understandably concerned about these attacks and the innocent lives that were taken. Mm -hmm. Um, So it, unfortunately, in this kind of political climate, Politicians will try to score points. Mm-hmm. Um, some, you know, cynically, there some of them are see this as an opportunity to advance their own image. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, more optimistically, some of them think they're doing the right thing, um, and they feel the need to act. And it's um, a rare moment um, after these attacks. You know, usually the political process can be very slow, mm-hmm. so they are empowered to make these laws and pass things more quickly. Mm-hmm. And we've seen that a lot. Um, 
what you know, living in the U.S., we we remember what it was like after September 11th, uh, 2001. How we passed a lot of laws like the Patriot Act, and um, that led to the NSA spying uh, mm -hmm. surveillance regime that we're still fighting and trying to roll back. Um, so we we have experience. Um, about what it means to pass lots of laws in short term, but certainly in France, um, we've seen really, really worrying legislation mm -hmm. that takes away a lot of human rights protections, um, such as even having the right uh, to a fair trial, mm -hmm. um, to you know have a hearing. Um, there's uh, all kinds of uh, scary provisions about just you can your house can be raided at any time. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, again, there's another law that we've been pu pushing against uh, uh, in the EU level called the passenger name recognition, which basically logs passenger names as they move to and from Europe. Mm -hmm. And just that the, the, the proposed bill is a really bad idea, just keeping a lot of data probably in an insecure way mm -hmm. about people that wasn't all that useful, mm -hmm. um, was just passed. Um, because in this climate of, of uh, paranoia, there's, the, the attacks happen, so it's definitely a real thing. Um, but, you know, what I think is that um, these moments of um, political crisis um, show what the fabric of the society and the laws um, support. So there should be good enough laws, and there are good laws, EU constitution, all these different mm -hmm. um uh, you know, the U.S. Constitution, um, all these different places have really strong laws and mm -hmm. procedures on the book that pres that respect human rights. You don't just throw those out the window right. for an emergency. So that's something that we're, we're fighting against and saying, hey, you've got good enough stuff. You're just not using it properly. Mm -hmm. But if you put these measures into place, you're going to take away people's rights and you'll never get them back. I mean, the Patriot Act was passed 15 years ago and we're still fighting some of the things that were enabled by the Patriot Act. Mm -hmm.